I'm Semaganda Joseph of Big Game Animal Breeding Farm. Thanks once again for joining us on our YouTube channel. To all of our returning subscribers, please, thanks so much for following us. And if you are new here, please make it a point to subscribe to our YouTube channel. As always, I've got very important for information for you. Where I'm standing right now, this is our Super Napier or Napier Park Chong Garden. As you can see, we, we just harvested this Napier. Four weeks back, now it's already mature and ready to be harvested again. I'm going in this video. I'm going to show you the importance of super napier, how to plant it from planting to harvesting to making silage in the following videos. This napier is very good and it's hairless. You see its advantages. I would recommend all those farmers who have small portions of land to plant super napier because of its protein content, its nutrients. It's probably it's a sweetness to the animals, and besides that, provide this volume. However much we need the quality, again we need the volume so that the animals can be fully fed. So this napier provides volume, and besides this volume, it has got high nutrient content. Depending on the harvesting stage, that is the key. At the stage at which you harvest, let it be cross Ghana, Brachelia, or Alfalfa. There is a certain stage where those pastures have got high nutrient content. So dear farmers, consider planting Napier Pak Chong. What is Napier Pak Chong 1 or Super Napier? Super Napier Pak Chong 1 originated from Thailand at a place called Pak Chong 1 and it was developed by Dr. Glylos Kiafong. Dr. Kiafong is a plant breeder and an animal nutritionist. Super Napier was developed by crossing palmillet and elephant Napier grass and the crossing of the two plants has enhanced the nutritional value hence making it a spear Napier grass. That was why it is called the king of Napier grasses. It has got several advantages. That's why I recommend the farmers to grow Super Napier. First of all, it has high levels of good proteins specifically good protein content measuring from 16% to 18% but only at an optimum height of 1.2 meter cutting. At this point it has the optimum good protein. So dear farmers, if you are to plant this napier grass or if you have it, it is very good to know the stage at which you are supposed to harvest your napier. Because if you harvest it when it is past that stage, the more it grows, or it grows older, the less will be the protein content. So it's very convenient to know the stage at which you must, at which you must harvest it. Super Napier is also hairless on both the stem and the leaves, making it easy to handle for both the farmer and your workers losing hands and also easier to feed to the animals. So that's another advantage. Why should I recommend you to plant that super napier which you see in the lines and I'll be telling you the measurements that we made. So super napier pak chong one contains water soluble carbohydrates. Water soluble carbohydrates are sugars that help the napier grass in the fermentation process. Hence it is suitable for making silage without the need to add on any answers like molasses or other inoculants therefore enabling farmers to store it for a long period of time enabling farmers prepare for the dry spell but if you are in an area where you can access molasses because molasses has also got its own only nutrients which are very vital and crucial to the fermentation process and it so provides that very good scent which is highly needed by the animals to attract them to eat the feeds so but if you're in any area where you don't have molasses or other inoculants which can be used as enhancers so dear farmers if, if you have any pear pack chong you can just cover it properly and it will stay there for a long period of time and again super napier it has high productivity in terms of volume and optimum conditions you get 200 tons in an acre of land for a period of one year wow how do you get to the 200 tons first of all 
the Napier grass grows at a very fast rate in such a way that if you plant your cutting today, in the next 75 to 90 days, it will be ready for harvesting. That's two, two and a half to three months old. It will have reached the maximum height of 1.2 meter, and that's the point it has the optimum cold protein. All we need in these pastures or grasses mainly is the protein content of those because it's necessary in the building of the muscles. So you can see it has between 16 to 18 protein content. That's very good. Another advantage of Spanipia, it has many shoots or call them the tillers. So in such a way that if you plant these cuttings, they will grow back very fast and they will multiply in numbers. By the time we are doing the first harvesting, you have an average of 25 to 30 tillers, which continue to increase with time as you continue to harvest the napier grass. It can also grow and you exceed those ones. And if you plant super napier in a hole measured in two square feet, it can produce an average of 116 tillers, meaning 200 tons a year can easily be produced from one acre a year, which means you get enough feeds to feed 14 to 15 cows a year from one acre, which is a key save to farmers. So if an a, a dial cow can take 15 kgs a day and a goat eats 2 kgs a day, you can multiply and see how the number of goats or sheep you can have at your farm when you have it. That's the matter of saying that for the soft goats, they need the other dry matter and other pastures like Brachelia, if you're on zero grazing, and Chloris Ghana, then plus alfalfa. But make an assumption that you have your Chloris and you have also this one to be so good. So Supernapia is not just a stomach feeder. So it's for the sake of goats and sheep, you can use it like 40%. And 60% you mix the alfalfa and the cross or brachelia so that it can add on because it's cold protein is so high when harvested at the optimal stage. Another point is super napier is a tropical crop and does well under many conditions. But the key point in a growing super napier is the optimal condition of making sure your cereals are rich in organic matter, which in this case. I'm talking about manure. So manure from cows, goat or sheep and giving it a bit of moisture when it is dry, it will be easy for you to get the 200 tons. It performs when well black cotton soils, loam soils, clay soils and to my surprise, it is also trying in sandy soils at my farm because my farm is 70% sandy soils. That's where I try to grow it. And it's doing well, as you can see how it looks like. My area is full of sand, but at least you can see how this napier is trying to perform even in such an area. This is a crop which is going to help people with small land who want to do livestock farming and also to, to revolutionize the dairy sector in our country, Uganda and Africa at large. The crude protein in the napier of 16 to 18% is likely to help the farmers produce more milk at a lower cost because what you have been liking for or looking for in the concentrates is in the protein. And the costs of concentrates have gone up, almost doubling. Yet, super napier, we, have, we are likely to maintain our production without having to incur a lot of costs. Quote me well, I'm not saying you get the actual protein content as concentrates for the dairy farmers, but if harvested at optimum height of 1.2 meter, it is a better alternative for us low income earners in the, sec in the sector. So it is beneficial to farmers because you have more saved since it reduces the cost of production. In life, if you fail to get at least first class upper, you can still get first class or you can if you fail to get a first class it's been second good so it is a very good alternative if you use it properly and harvest it at the required stage super napier can be propagated from cuttings 
and spacing between plant to plant is one meter and between rows it should also be one meter so that's one meter squared it is good to plant a two node cutting so that one node goes into the soil and the other node stays outside or at the top also planting should be made at an angle of 45 degrees so dear farmers that should be properly coated so if you want to get good results try as much as you can to keep on your garden a weed free so there are two types of planting super napier we have that that tombokiza method here you plant using the holes you dig a hole that is two feet square two square feet and also two feet deep put in some manure mixed with top soils then put it back then you plant your cuttings into the hole and in each hole there must be one cutting the other method is where you use fallows that are spread or spaced one meter from each other as you, you have seen in the video with some manure in the holes and then plant your cuttings and the planting angle should be 45 degrees and if you plant well after 75 to 90 days you'll be harvesting and if you apply organic fertilizers after the first cutting you'll be harvesting again after 35 to 45 days so after every harvesting you have to put their more organic fertilizers that's manure back because the more manure you apply back to the grasses or that napier the more it keeps on giving more production it's good to make the spacing one meter because if you plant less than one meter they will cover the space very fast because of their high tuning effect but if optimally managed good enough with super napier you plant once and that takes you seven to eight years to plant again but on one condition of optimal management that's why applying back organic fertilizers which i don't affect the soils is highly recommended and this is a very good advantage according to how the economy is performing and it is a big saving to farmers no buying seeds or planting every year and since the size of the land is not changing yet the population is increasing this causes us to start planting perennial pastures for me in my videos i only talk about perennial pastures because it will enable farmers with limited space also to grow livestock farming because you can have 12 to 16 dairy cows on one and a half acre and feed them properly with this napier so farmers operate on zero grazing unit super napier will help you to succeed without hustling so much because of 75 percent of the cost of production is coming from the feed so once you solve the problem of the feeds there you'll be okay so super napier will help you manage that cost and is likely to be more attractive to farmers also will create more jobs because farmers will be having more make once you have enough feeds to feed your animals even the multiplication effect of your animals will be high so you will need more workers hence creating more jobs even learning your farm will become easy due to reduced production costs to all farmers practicing zero grazing. This is a must have at your farm. I believe Super Napier will transform the livestock sector in Uganda and Africa at large if harvested at the optimal stage. And remember, even some concentrates even have aflatoxin, which affects the cows. And yet, the Super Napier are going to reduce the cost by reducing on the quantities of the concentrates that you feed the animals because of the protein level in the super napier so dear farmers if you are on zero grazing or a small portion of land yes we care about the nutritional value of alfalfa cross ghana brachelia glycerin centrisema and others you know but again we need a volume even if you have all it needs it's not so easy to get alfalfa in huge quantities and again it isn't easy to have centrisema or glycerin other legume pastures. So my advice to you farmers, if you have super napier, or if you have already planted your local napier, and if you don't want to change, but remember this is the king of napier because it's a combination of two. You have the elephant grass, and again you have the palmitate. That's why its protein content is so so high. There we are adding on some molasses. So for that's what you do. You mix it our napier. You mix it with the 
course Guyana because we know that there are some microbes in the stomach of goat, goats and sheep which need to regurgitate on that course Guyana for them to survive so that the animal don't go in the acidosis process. That's why you do it like this. So we also had the molasses. So they are farmers. As I was telling you, I was telling you what to do. Please, dear farmers, consider planting spanapia because of its volume. Again, if you have enough feeds, even if you have alfalfa and you give them, and they're not fully satisfied, it won't be easy. So, you, at least it can help you to become a stomacher feeder. But because of its nutritional content, it can't stop there. Again, it will provide you with more and more protein content. Thanks so much for watching and following BGM and Mobiling Farm. Please, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my YouTube channel. God bless you all.